In this section of the MEC study group, we will be covering general maintenance. Approximately 24% of the questions asked on the MEC exam will be on the area of electrical, which means that about 24 of the 100 questions will be about the services and repair of patient rooms, hospital beds, surgical tables, patient transport equipment, furniture, dietary equipment, sterilizers, office equipment, laundry, and housekeeping equipment. Also covered is preventive maintenance, painting and decorating, drywall repair, non-hospital electrical equipment, and finally fire prevention and detecting systems. This is an important topic to focus on for the test as it accounts for twice as many as most of the other areas and combined with the electrical topic, the two account for nearly half of the questions on the test. We are going to be covering the following tasks that come directly out of the MEC test prep preparation manual. Gas and arc welding methods and procedures, air compressor operation and troubleshooting, pump operation and repair, alignment of flexible couplers for motors, how to use packing glands, how to cut and install glass, basic hydraulics, how to paint and the use of various types of paint products, how to apply anchors and anchoring systems, general troubleshooting and repair of a wide variety of hospital equipment, OSHA requirements for hand and shop tools, how to replace V-belts and align pulleys, various aspects of preventive maintenance programs, how and when to select and apply lubrication, and finally, how to adjust RPM in pulley-operated equipment. The first area we will, we will be covering is gas and arc welding methods and procedures. One of the most common types of arc welding is shielded metal arc welding. It is also known as manual metal arc welding or stick welding. Electric current is used to strike an arc between the base material and consumable electrical electrode rod, which is made of filler material, typically steel, and is covered with a flux that protects the weld area from oxidation and contamination by producing carbon dioxide gas during the welding process. The electrode core itself acts as filler material, making a separate filler unnecessary. Gas metal arc welding, also known as metal inert gas or MIG welding, is a semi-automatic or automatic process that uses a continuous wire feed as an electrode and an inert or semi-inert gas mixture to protect the weld from contamination. Since the electrode is continuous, welding speeds are greater for GMAW than for SMAW. A related process, flux cord arc welding, uses similar equipment but uses wire consisting of a steel electrode surrounding a powder-filled material. This cord wire is more expensive than the standard solid wire and can generate fumes and or slag, but it permits even higher welding speed and greater metal penetration. Gas tungsten arc welding, or tungsten inert gas welding, is a manual welding process that uses a non-consumable tungsten electrode, an inert or semi-inert gas mixture, and a separate filler material. Especially useful for welding thin materials, this method is characterized by a, a stable arc and high quality welds, but it requires significant operator skill and can only be accomplished at relatively low speeds. The most common gas welding process is oxyfuel welding, also known as oxyacetylene welding. It is one of the oldest and most versatile welding processes, but in recent years it has become less popular in industrial applications. It is still widely used for welding pipes and tubes, as well as repair work. Next, we will be covering air compressor operation and troubleshooting. In a hospital environment, there are two types of air compressors. Medical air compressors provide a high pressure air source for medical operations and procedures and comes in direct contact with patients. It provides for extremely high filtration and moisture removal. 
It also ensures that the air supply is free of any bacterial or infectious materials or organisms. Industrial air compressors provide high pressure air to be used with mechanical equipment. This air source is used to power pneumatic tools and actuators. Although it does not necessarily have the same degree of treatment as medical air, it does provide for clean, dry air that will ensure that tools and equipment continue to operate efficiently. The actual compressor section of a system pulls air in from atmosphere and compresses it to create higher pressure air. The three basic types of air compressors are reciprocating, rotary screw, and rotary centrifugal. These types are further specified by the number of compression stages, the cooling method, either air, water, or oil, the drive method, either motor, engine, steam, or some other, and also the lubrication, oil, oil-free, where oil-free means no lubricating oil contacting the compressed air. For reciprocating air compressors, they are positive displacement machines meaning that they increase the pressure of the air by reducing its volume. This means they are taking in successive volumes of air, which is defined within a closed space and elevating this air to a higher pressure. The reciprocating air compressor accomplishes this by a piston within a cylinder as the compressing and displacing element. Single stage and two stage reciprocating compressors are commercially available. Single stage compressors are generally used for pressures in the range of 70 to 100 PSI. Two-stage compressors are generally used for higher pressures in the range of 100 to 250 PSI. Note that approximately one horsepower is equivalent to four CFM at 100 PSI, and that one to 50 horsepower are typically for reciprocating units. Compressors 100 horsepower and above are typically rotary screw or centrifugal compressors. The reciprocating air compressor is single acting when the compressing is accomplished using only one side of the piston. A compressor using both sides of the piston is considered double acting. Load reduction is achieved by unloading individual cylinders. Typically this is accomplished by throttling the suction pressure to the cylinder or bypassing air either within or outside the compressor. Capacity control is achieved by varying speed in engine driven units through fuel flow control. Reciprocating air compressors are available either as air-cooled or water-cooled in lubricated and non-lubricated configurations and provide a wide range of pressure and capacity selections. Rotary air compressors are positive displacement compressors. The most common rotary air compressor is a single-stage helical or spiral lobe oil flooded screw air compressor. These compressors consist of two rotors within a casing where the rotors compress the air internally. There are no valves. These units are basically oil cooled with air cooled or water cooled oil coolers where the oil seals the internal clearances. Since the cooling takes place right inside the compressor, the working parts never experience extreme operating temperatures. The rotary compressor, therefore, is a continuous duty air cooled or water cooled compressor package. Rotary screw air compressors are easy to maintain and operate. Capacity control for these compressors is accomplished by variable speed and variable compressor displacement. For the latter control technique, a slide valve is positioned in the casing. As the compressor capacity is reduced, the slide valve opens, bypass, bypassing a portion of the compressed air back to the suction. Advantages of the rotary screw compressor include smooth, pulse-free air output in a compact size with high output volume over a long life. The oil-free rotary screw air compressor utilizes specially designed air ends to compress air without oil in the compression chamber, yielding true oil-free air. Oil-free rotary screw air compressors are available air-cooled and water-cooled and provide the same flexibility as oil flooded rotaries when oil-free air is required. The centrifugal air compressor is a dy dynamic compressor which depends on transfer of energy from a rotating impeller to the air. Centrifugal compressors produce high pressure discharge by converting angular momentum imparted by the rotating impeller. In order to do this efficiently, 
Centrifugal compressors rotate at higher speeds than the other types of compressors. These types of compressors are also designed for higher capacity because flow through the compressor is continuous. Adjusting the inlet guide vanes is the most common method to control capacity of a centrifugal compressor. By closing the guide vanes, volumetric flows and capacity are reduced. The centrifugal air compressor is an oil-free compressor by design. The oil lubricated running gear is separated from the air by shaft seals and atmospheric vents. Filters remove particulates to ensure that compressed air is clean. Air dryer assemblies remove moisture from atmospheric air to ensure that compressed air is dry. Next, we will review pump operation and repair. A pump is any device meant to facilitate the motion of a fluid. Pumps displace fluids, causing it to move downstream or out of a pipe. Most pumps use some sort of compressional action to displace the fluid. This compressional action sometimes necessitates a motor that acts to put pressure on the fluid in order to displace it. This motor can be powered by a variety of fuels as long as it has the necessary power to displace the fluid. Most pumps are either positive displacement or rotodynamic, however, there are hundreds of types and variations of pumps. For additional information about the various pumps, please visit the link shown on the screen. All pumps will consist of a pump section, shown as A on the screen, which will move the fluid from the input or return side of the pump to the output or supply side. In moving the fluid, the pump will generally also raise the pressure as well. The pump will also have a drive section, shown as B on the screen, that is responsible for turning the pump. In this example, the drive is an electric motor. Common pump failures relate to leaks. The pump could leak externally from a seal or gasket at the supply and return hookups. It could leak internally at the shaft seal, as shown with the number two. The shaft is where the drive portion connects to the pump section. If the shaft seal leaks, fluids can get into the drive section. Particularly in pumps that are turned by electric motors, this scenario can be very dangerous. A leak of this kind can damage the windings, contacts, bearings, or any number of other internal parts. If not discovered early, it could require complete motor replacement. Both the pump and the drive have shims, shown as number 13, and or bearings, number 12. Degradation over time will lead to irregular sounds and high temperatures. Proper maintenance is crucial to ex extending the life of this equipment. Daily rounding is a great way of discovering irregular sounds promptly. Quick response to these situations will minimize damage and can avoid replacement of equipment. In this section, we will review alignment of flexible couplers for motors. The purpose of the flexible coupling is to compensate for temperature changes and to permit end movements of the shafts without interference with each other while transmitting power from the driver to the pump. There are two forms of misalignment between the pump shaft and the driver shaft as follows. One, angular misalignment, which is the shafts with axis, axes concentric but not parallel. Two, parallel misalignment, which is the shafts with axes parallel but not concentric. The faces of the coupling halves should be spaced within the manufacturer's recommendations and far enough apart so that they cannot strike each other when the driver rotor is moved hard over toward the pump. Allowance should be made for wear of the thrust bearings. The necessary tools for an approximate check of the alignment of a flexible coupling or a straight edge and a taper gauge or a set of feeler gauges. A check for angular alignment is made by inserting the taper gauge or feelers at four points between the coupling faces and comparing the distance between the faces at four points spaced at 90 degree intervals around the coupling. See the figure on the left. The unit will be in angular alignment when the measurements show that the coupling faces are the same distance apart at all points. 
A check for parallel alignment is made by placing a straight edge across both coupling rims at the top, bottom, and at both sides, shown in the figure on the right. The unit will be in parallel alignment when the straight edge rests evenly on the coupling rim at all positions. Angular and parallel misalignment are corrected by means of shims under the motor mounting feet. After each change, it is necessary to recheck the alignment of the coupling halves. Adjustment in one direction may disturb adjustments already made in another direction. It should not be necessary to adjust the shims under the pump. The permissible amount of misalignment will vary with the type of pump and driver and coupling manufacturer model and size. Next, we will review how to use packing glands. A packing gland is a general type of stuffing box used to seal a rotating or reciprocating shaft against the fluid. The most common example is used as the shaft seal on a pump, where the gland is usually packed with string which has been soaked in tallow or similar grease. The gland nut or flange allows the packing material to be compressed to form a watertight seal and prevent water leaking up the shaft when the tap is turned on. The gland at the rotating shaft of a centrifugal pump may be packed in a similar way and graphite grease used to accommodate continuous operation. Next, we will review how to cut and install glass. When cutting glass, be sure to use the appropriate personal protective equipment at all times. First, clean the surface of the glass, but only necessary where you plan to score the glass. Use a glass cutter and some light cutting oil or kerosene. Dip the cutting tool in the oil before scoring the glass. Using a straight edge, start scoring glass along the line. After scoring the glass, lightly break the glass into two pieces. Use fine sandpaper to remove any rough or sharp edges. When installing glass, wear construction style gloves and safety glasses. Measure out the existing window frame for glass specs. New glass should be a fraction of an inch smaller than the frame. Insert new glass from top to bottom carefully. Install glazier points up every four inches around the glass. Glazier points are small metal triangles that hold the glass in place. Use glass putty or weather stripping to install around glass insert. Next, we will review basic hydraulics. To understand hydraulics, some basic principles must be understood, including the ones on the slide shown here. Hydraulics work because liquids are essentially non-compressible, and the hydraulic fluid is easily moved through pipes, hoses, and control devices to do work. It is in fact the science of energy tr transmission through a liquid which depends on some characteristics of a liquid and an understanding how force is transmitted through a liquid. There are four methods of force or energy transmission which are mechanical, electrical, hydraulic, and pneumatic which are capable of transmitting force also known as kinetic energy. Hydraulics occur when a static force is transmitted in a, in a confined liquid in the form of hydraulic pressure. The pressure is transmitted equally throughout the liquid and since the fluid can take the shape of any container, the pressure will be transmitted regardless of the shape of the container. Pascal's law states that it is the property of a liquid to transmit pressure equally throughout itself. It states that pressure is equal to force divided by area. For additional information on basic hydraulic principles, please visit the sites shown on the screen. Next, we will review how to paint and the use of various types of paint products. When preparing a room for painting, you will typically do the following. First, clear the room. This will help to remove to move around easier around the room with obstacles or interruption. Any big or hard to move furniture can be moved to the middle of the room. Clean the room before painting, including removing things like cobwebs, old tape, and dust. Lay drop cloths 
or rosin paper around each wall against the base of the wall. Fill in any open penetrations, holes, dents, cracks with spackle or drywall compound. Apply tape to the areas that are not going to be painted and then proceed with painting. Some of the following tools shown on the screen are basic paint tools used during any paint project, including paint brushes, paint rollers, extension poles for reaching those hard to reach areas, paint pans, drop cloths, or painter's tape. Listed are various types of paint products and paint types. Primers ensure better adhesion of paint to the surface, increases paint durability, and provides additional protection for the material being painted. Other products include wood stains, sealers, top coats, commercial high performance coatings, concrete and masonry paint, aerosols, faux finishings, and floor coatings. Next, we will review how to apply anchors and anchoring systems. Some basic or standard anchoring systems include the following when hanging certain applications. Hollow wall anchors are used in thin materials or hollow walls. Threaded drywall anchors typically have a Phillips head screwdriver insert and are used in normal drywall applications. Threaded drywall toggles are meant for stronger applications holding up to 40 pounds or more. Winged plastic anchors are less expensive forms of an ex expansion anchor. These comprise between strength, these compromise between strength and cost. Once a screw is inserted in this style anchor, the backside splits open in a wing shape to hold on the backside of the drywall. Mollies are used to firmly hold applications that will be installed or removed often. Toggle bolts are referred to as the top style hollow wall anchor, typically sized bigger than its own diameter to allow room for the butterfly, but with these, the thicker the wall, the better. Expa expansion anchors are used in thick solid materials such as brick, mortar, metals, and woods. These are only as strong as the material they're being installed in. Concrete anchors shown on the screen, are likely the most commonly used anchors you will see, and they come in a myriad of varieties. Next, we will review general troubleshooting and the repair of a wide variety of hospital equipment. When troubleshooting equipment, determine the failure mode, failure agent, and failure classification. This way the technician troubleshooting can do a better job of collecting necessary information that will help perform better root cause failure analysis and subsequently identify the underlying reasons causing equipment problems. When the real reasons for the equipment problems are known, the, t the technician troubleshooting the equipment can recommend and implement corrective actions for repair that will prevent further similar problems and allow increased average times between failures. Next, we will re we'll review OSHA requirements for hand and shop tools. Many of the OSHA requirements can be found in Part 1926-300. 1926-300A pertains to the condition of tools. Both of the next sections, 1 and 2, pertain to safety guards. For additional information regarding OSHA requirements, surrounding hand and shop tools, please visit the site shown on the screen. Next, we will review how to replace V-belts and align pulleys. First, take off the old fan belt. Take the old belt off the pulley, you will need a wrench or maybe two to release the tension on the belt. Tension systems differ between applications, but the effect of each is still the same. 
They maintain a tight belt when in use, and they allow you to, to adjust the tension. In this case, you want to reduce the tension on the belt so that you can slide it off of the pulleys. Cutting the belt is an acceptable option as well. Next, get the right size replacement belt. Verify that the belt number is the same. Use your thumbs to stretch both belts together. They should be very close in size. Sometimes the new one is a little bit different length. If it is a centimeter or so short, then that is okay. It will likely stretch out a little bit. Install the new belt. When replacing fan belts, route the new belt so that it uses the exact same path as the old belt. You will need to loosen the hardware, securing the motor in order to slip the new belt onto all pulleys. After it is in place, tighten it using the tension adjuster and re-tighten all hardware. A helpful fan belt repair tip is that the belt should be taut and should not squeal when the unit is running. To determine if it is tight enough, remove anything that could get caught in moving parts and turn on the unit. If the belt doesn't squeal, then it is probably tight enough. When you tighten the belt, be careful not to get it too tight. If it is too tight, it will put unreasonable stress on components and lead to failure over time. When attaching pulleys to the shaft, care must be taken to align both pulleys in a straight line to each other. This will increase power transmission and reduce wear and tear on the belts and the pulleys, extending the life of both. Also, make sure the shaft of the motor and the shaft of the fan are aligned with each other. Alignment can be done on smaller fans by simply laying a ruler or straight edge flat on the face of each pulley to assure both pulleys are in line with each other. More advanced technology, such as a laser belt pulley alignment instrument, may be required to accurately align larger systems. Next, we will review the various aspects of preventive maintenance programs. An effective preventive maintenance program typically consists of the following major elements. Goals or objectives, program structure and organization, management of the established program. Key elements to any program are to, one, define specific goals for the program. Next, utilize qualified maintenance personnel. Have an organized and effective system for maintaining equipment records and scheduling maintenance work. And finally, include periodic management reviews to evaluate and continually improve the program. Next, we will review how and when to select and apply lubrication. Generally speaking, frequency and the amount of lubrication should be done strictly per the manufacturer's recommendations. The main concern in applying is in applying too much grease. This can lead to immediate bearing failure. Bearings that allow for grease to flow through them are the easiest to service. They allow old grease to escape out of a plug as new grease is being applied. There is little chance of overpacking the bearing. It is important to note though that sealed bearings cannot be lubricated, but should be periodically inspected. Next, we'll review some of the common tips for using a grease gun. First, calculate the proper amount of grease needed for relubrication of bearings based upon the calibrated delivery volume of the selected grease gun. Next, use a vent plug on the relief port of the bearing to help flush old grease to reduce the risk of too much pressure on the bearing. Use extreme caution when loading grease into the grease gun to ensure that contaminants are not introduced. If using a cartridge, be careful when removing the metal lid that no metal slivers are introduced into the grease. Next, make sure the grease gun is clearly marked to identify the grease with which it is, should be charged. Do not use any type of grease other than that which is identified. Always make sure the dispensing nozzle of the grease gun is clean before using. Pump a small amount of grease out of the dispensing nozzle, then wipe off with a clean rag or lint-free cloth before attaching to the grease fitting. Next, clean the grease fitting of all dirt before attaching the grease gun. Inspect and replace damaged fittings. Also, clean the grease fitting after applying grease. It is helpful to use grease fitting caps to keep them clean. 
but still wipe fittings clean before applying grease. And finally, ensure the proper grease is used at every grease point. Applying the wrong grease can cause an incompatibility problem which can quickly cause bearing failure. Lubrication points should be clearly identified with which grease is to be used. This can be done with colored labels, adhesive dots, or paint markers. Next, we will review how to adjust RPM in pulley operated equipment. Fan law one is applied to adjust RPM in pulley operated equipment. First, measure the outside diameter of the belt riding on the pulley. Also, measure the physical outside diameter of the pulley just to be sure the pulley is large enough to adjust to the requ required diameter. In our example on the screen, suppose we have a five and a half inch adjustable motor pulley and the fan is currently delivering 5100 CFM on a 15 ton system that requires 6000 CFM. Calculate the new motor pulley diameter. Now, using fan law one as seen in the example, Simply divide once and then multiply once to find the new pulley size needed for the fan to move the required airflow. Divide the 6000 CFM by 5100 CFM to find the ratio of airflow increase. Notice the airflow should increase about 17% for the fan to, to deliver the required airflow. Then multiply the, the pulley belt diameter of 5.5 inches by 1.17 to find the new belt diameter of 6.44 inches. For additional information, please follow the link located on the screen. We will now go over the test questions covered in the MEC test preparation manual. You can follow along in the booklet as there are some complicated diagrams in the manual that are referenced in this review. CAT test question one. Patient care room accessories that are to be serviced include A, generators, B, HVAC equipment, C, dietary equipment, or D, sphygmomanometers. D is the correct answer here because a sphygmomanometer is a patient room accessory used for monitoring arterial blood pressure. Therefore, it needs to be calibrated typically on a six-month basis. A is incorrect because generators are not found in patient rooms. B is incorrect because HVAC equipment is serviced typically at the main equipment origin point. C is incorrect because dietary equipment is not found in patient rooms. CAT test question two. Trendelenburg switches operate A, positioning motors in beds, B, control centers for parking lot lights, C, sterilizer water and steam solenoids, D, computer control interfaces. Answer A is the correct answer here because Trendelenburg is a bed positioning switch located on the side of a patient bed that allows for specific body position from 15 to 30 degrees with the head of the bed tilted down. B is incorrect because it only has to do with parking lot lights and nothing to do with the beds. C is incorrect because sterilizers are devices used to clean surgical accessories and tools. D is incorrect because computer control interfaces can interact with the circuit board, but typically not the Trendelenburg function. CAT test question three. Pallet warmers are considered A, HVAC devices, B, sterilizer equipment, C, dietary equipment, or D, building electrical system components. C is the best answer here because pallet warmers are also known as plate warmers that are used to keep food warm while in transit or until used for patient consumption. A is incorrect because HVAC is for building, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. B is incorrect because sterilizer equipment has to do with sterilizing medical equipment. D is incorrect because building electrical system components have to do with the building itself and the electrical system. CAT test question four. Temperature recorder paper needs to re be replaced in A, 
sterilizer equipment, B, dietary equipment, C, electrical controls panels, D, office equipment. A is the best answer here because sterilizers are used to clean and disinfect bacteria, and by law, this must be a documented process for regulatory standards. B is incorrect because dietary equipment does not need nor does it require temperature recording paper. C is incorrect because electrical control panels are monitored by either by other measure, measures such as paper operational logs or the building management system, or BMS. D is incorrect because office equipment does not have anything to record. CAT test question five. Devices attached to gas sterilizers eliminate the gas A, carbon monoxide, B, carbon dioxide, C, difluorodichloromethane, D, ethylene oxide. D is the best answer here because ethylene oxide is the type of compound that can easily participate and bond with chemical reactions, therefore this must be eliminated. A is incorrect because carbon monoxide will eventually dissipate in the air if released and is short-lived. B is incorrect because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, which is a naturally occurring chemical compound. C is incorrect because it is used as a refrigerant agent to propel aerosols. CAT test question six. AV equipment service would be conducted in the A, kitchen area, B, mechanical room, C, surgical area, D, office area. D is the best answer here because an office area is typically where you would find audio-visual equipment or devices. A is incorrect because a kitchen is for food preparation equipment. B is incorrect because a mechanical room houses building equipment and services of audiovisual equipment is not necessary for this area. C is incorrect because a surgical room is a sterile environment used only for surgery procedures. CAT test question seven. Preventative maintenance is best accomplished under conditions that A, require immediate attention for safety reasons, B, are emergency situations, equipment is in high demand, are considered low use, C, are considered low use periods for the equipment, or D, allow a predetermined amount of time with the equipment. D is the best answer here because preventative maintenance allows a predetermined time to maintain the equipment before fault or failure occurs based on time or usage. A is incorrect because the primary goal is to avoid or mitigate the consequences of, fail of failure in equipment to prevent safety issues. B is incorrect because emergency situations can occur at any time as to where preventative maintenance is in place to prevent failure before it actually happens. C is incorrect because preventative maintenance is best practice on a scheduled basis rather than equipment operating usage periods and conditions. CAT test question eight. Non-hospital electrical equipment used within the hospital must conform to hospital requirements before it is A, tagged with an identification number, B, operated within the healthcare building, C, allowed in the building, or D, used by a contractor. B is the best answer here because it simply needs to meet all hospital requirements before being operated within the healthcare building. A is incorrect because ID numbers are not always applicable. C is incorrect because non-hospital equipment, electrical equipment, may be inspected someplace inside the building. D is incorrect because the equipment inspection should be dictated by when the equipment is operated, not by who is operating it. CAT test question nine. The most used portion of a building fire alarm system is the A, siren, B, pole station, C, sprinkler head, D, manifold. B is correct here because it is an initiating device that triggers the system. A is incorrect because for the siren to work, an initiating device must be activated first. C is incorrect because it is activated by a heat-causing 
component to fail on the head and thereby releasing water from the sprinkler head, reducing the growth of a fire. D is incorrect because a manifold controls or measures the amount of water flow through the system when water is being released. CAT test question 10. When moving furniture and equipment, basic rules need to be followed such as A. Disassemble the equipment if possible into smaller pieces. B. Use the proper size cart for the weight of the object. C. Strap the load to the cart. Or D. All of the above. D is the correct answer here because all of the above are basic rules to follow during furniture moves. Com test four, question number six. What does the pH scale measure? A, pitch at one quarter per inch per foot. B, pressure or height. C, acidity or alkalinity. D, voltage or amperage. C is the best answer to this question because pH is a measurement of the activity of hydrogen ion. Solutions with less than 7 pH are acidic and those with greater than 7 pH are basic or alkaline. A is not correct because pitch is a measurement of an angle or propeller. B is not correct because pressure or height is measured by gauge in PSI or measuring stick by inches or feet. D is not correct because voltage or amperage is an electrical measure of volts or ampere. Comp test four, question number seven. The main purpose of lubrication is usually to A, reduce friction and wear, B, allow the moving parts to roll rather than slide, C, keep the machinery cool, D, prevent rust, corrosion, and contamination. A is the best answer here and is the most correct. Lubrication, regardless of the application, will reduce friction and wear. B is less correct. Some types of equipment rely on rolling, others on sliding. Each could be good or bad depending on the application. C is less correct because reducing friction will help reduce heat but is not the main purpose of lubrication. D is less correct because the prevention of rust and etc. is a byproduct of lubrication, but is not the primary reason for it. Hence, answer A is the best answer here. Comp test five, question number five. The correct arc length is in, is in normal electric arc welding is A, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch, B, a 32nd of an inch to a 16th of an inch, C, a 16th of an inch to an eighth of an inch, or D, zero inches to a 32nd of an inch. Answer C is correct here. Proper arc length ensures proper penetration and prevents contamination. Answer A is incorrect because this is known as high current arc blow and causes the electric arc to be deflected away from the weld pool by magnetic forces and can cause porosity and contamination in the weld. B is incorrect because this size can cause shallow penetration and eventually strength related defects. D is incorrect because it will cause low arc and will cause the electrode to stick to the material because of mag magnetic forces. Comp test five, question number six. When welding on thin plate, the welding speed must be A, decreased, B, increased, C, the same as welding on thick plate, or D, makes no difference. Answer B is the best answer here because it is important to use the correct speed to ensure proper penetration while welding. Answer A is incorrect because decreased welding speed on thin material may burn a hole in the welding plate. Answer C is the incorrect answer because thick, a thick plate requires a slower speed for proper penetration. And answer D is the incorrect answer because speed plays a key role in welding procedures. So answer B is the best answer here. Comp test five, question number seven. Before welding, cast metal should be a. Cleaned, 
B, preheated, C, fluxed, or D, pre-chilled? Answer B is the correct answer because preheating not only cleans the casting of oils and grease, it also reduces weld stress. A is incorrect because as it is important to have the metal cleaned, it is more important to have the cast metal preheated. C is the incorrect answer because the flux is usually, is usually distributed from the electrode during the welding. D is the incorrect answer because the best results when casting metal include preheating, not chilling. Comp test six, question number five. Cutting with an oxyacetylene torch requires more A, acetylene, B, oxygen, C, both acetylene and oxygen, D, heat to penetrate the metal. Answer B is the correct answer because you need more oxygen than acetylene to cut with an oxyacetylene torch. Answer A is the incorrect answer because acetylene is the fuel which needs a large amount of oxygen to increase the flame temperature. C is the incorrect answer because this type of torch requires more oxygen than acetylene to function correctly. And D is the incorrect answer because oxyacetylene torches, when used properly, provide more than enough heat to penetrate the metal. Comp test six, question number six. The purpose of flux and flux coated rod is to A, remove rust, B, prevent oils from penetrating the metal, C, seal the metal surface, D, to remove and prevent contamination at the point of the weld. D is the correct answer here because flux prevents oxidation and contamination at the point of the weld. A is incorrect because flux is not a rust remover. Materials should be cleaned of rust before welding. B is incorrect because flux is not an oil inhibitor. C is incorrect because flux is not a metal sealer. Comp test six, question number seven. The principal function of a steam trap is to A, equalize pressure on the steam line, B, remove water that accumulates in the steam line. C, control the distribution of steam to the various pipelines in the system. Or D, conserve steam by releasing and maintaining a set of amount of steam pressure. Answer B is the best answer here. Steam traps are devices used to di discharge condensate and non-condensable gases with negligible loss of steam. A is not correct because equalizing pressure on the steam line is not a function of a steam trap. C is not the correct answer because controlling the distribution of steam is not a function of a steam trap. Answer D is not correct because maintaining steam pressure is not a function of a steam trap. Comp test seven, question number five. Blowers and other circulation fans should be checked for A, lubrication, meaning oils and greases, B, loose or broken belts or couplers. C, noise. D, all of the above. A is the correct answer, as well as B is the correct answer, and C is the correct answer. So answer D is the best answer here because all of the answers are correct. A is correct because lubrication is one of the things that needs to be periodically checked on fans and blowers. B is correct because loose or broken belts or couplers are also part of things that need to be inspected periodically. And C is correct because noise is an indicator of a fan or blower problem and needs to be one of the things to be checked periodically. So answer D is the best answer here. Comp test seven, question number six. The cost of a piece of equipment plus the cost of operating and maintaining it until it fails is called A, life cycle cost, B, replacement cost, C, operational cost, D, hypothetical cost. A is the correct answer here because the total of all cost added together, including equipment operation and maintenance, is considered the life cycle cost. Answer B is incorrect because it is the cost to replace the equipment only. Answer C is incorrect because operational cost is the cost of operation only. And answer D is the incorrect answer because hypothetical cost 
is the predicted cost only. Comp test seven, question number seven. Interpersonal skills can be used to A, communicate with fellow maintenance personnel, B, talk with healthcare patrons, C, determine equipment problems, D, all of the above. D is the correct answer here because interpersonal skills will help you communicate with coworkers and patients in order to provide assistance and allow you to ask for professional help, advice, or opinions when troubleshooting equipment problems. Comp test eight, question number five. Successful maintenance technicians practice A, using their tools, B, with their meters, C, good etiquette, and D, lifelong learning strategies. D is the best answer here because lifelong learning incorporates answers A, B, and C. Answers A, B, and C are incorrect when they are alone because these answers individually would not help to become a successful maintenance technician by themselves. Answer D is the best answer here. Comp test eight, question number six. Maintenance work consists of A, PMs, B, unscheduled work, C, specialty work, D, all of the above. Answer D is correct here because all of the answers are correct. Answer A is correct because they are required to maintain equipment properly. Answer B is correct because it includes such work as failing equipment and emergencies that require immediate attention. Answer C is correct, including but not limited to fabrication of retrofitting or retro retrofitting equipment. Comp test eight, question number seven. The official name of the document that directs work to be done within the facilities is called A, A, work order, B, invoice, C, ticket, D, directive. Answer A is the correct answer because the work order is necessary to describe the scope of work, track workflow, document information, communicate between a requester and appropriate personnel, and finalize or close out projects. Answer B is incorrect because an invoice is considered a bill of receipt. Answer C is incorrect because a ticket has limited capabilities for tracking information and does not specify the work scope or progress of completion. Answer D is incorrect because a directive is only an order or a list of instructions and it has no way of tracking, communicating, nor does it explain the scope of work. Comp test nine, question number five. A facilities management survey does which of the following? A, pinpoints problem areas. B, asks technicians technical questions. C, identifies exceptional work. D, creates more problems than it solves. Answer A is the correct answer here because the survey is designed to help analyze and point out areas of concern and problems. Answer B is incorrect because although the survey may ask technical questions, its primary function is to identify problem areas. Answer C is incorrect because although the survey may identify areas of excellence, its, goals, its goal is to improve overall processes. Answer D is incorrect because it is just an opinion and not a true fact. Comp test nine, question number six. The speed of a rotating shaft or pulley is measured in A, FPM, B, IBM, C, CPM, or D, RPM. Answer D is the best answer here because the question is asking about equipment that is rotating and RPM is an acronym for revolutions per minute. Answer A is not correct because it is an acronym for feet per minute. Answer B is not correct because it is an acronym for a large computing corporation. Answer C is not correct because it is an acronym for cycles per minute. Comp test nine, question number seven. Vibration is measured in A, FPM, B, IBM, C, CPS, D, RPM. Answer C is the best answer here because the question is asking about vibration, which is measured by its frequency 
and CPS is an acronym that stands for cycles per second. Note that today's standard is typically measured in hertz. Answer A is not correct because it is an acronym for feet per minute. Answer B is not correct because it is an acronym for a large computing corporation. And answer D is not correct because it is an acronym for revolutions per minute. Comp test 10, question number five. Maintenance that is performed on a routine basis is called A, scheduled maintenance, B, preventative maintenance, C, routine maintenance, and D, regular maintenance. Answer B is the correct answer here because preventative maintenance encompasses scheduled, routine, and regular maintenance. Companies refer to preventative maintenance as an umbrella for all forms of maintenance. Comp test 10, question number six. The acronyms TQM stands for A, total quantity of materials, B, total quality materials, C, total quality maintenance, or D, total quality management? Answer D is the best answer here, because TQM is an acronym for total quality management and is defined as the continual improvement of products and processes. Comp test 10, question number seven. Which of the following describes the word malfunction? A, failure, B, breakdown, C, act up, or D, all of the above? D is the correct answer because all of the above answers refer to the malfunction of equipment, plans, and quality of the process by keeping the facility in proper order. Comp test 11, question number five. The first step in diagno diagnosing a problem is, A, using your senses, B, asking where the problem is, C, setting the VOM correctly, D, taking a deep breath. Answer A is the best answer here, because using your senses is referring back to the training and knowledge of the job. B is incorrect because Asking where the problem is may mean that individuals might not have knowledge of the equipment or the problem itself. C is not the best answer because setting the VOM correctly may not be needed if a volt and ohm meter is not even used on the job. D is not the best answer because though breathing regu regularly during the diagnosis is a good idea so that you do not pass out, the concept of taking a deep breath does not pertain directly to diagnosing the problem. Comp test 11, question number six. A truth table can be used to, to describe the action or result of an operation. Which of the following is a truth table? A, flow diagram, B, circuit diagram, C, mechanical diagram, or D, part diagram? Answer A is the best answer because the flow diagram works through a process and shows the results of an operation. Answer B is incorrect because the circuit diagram is a diagram used for simplifying conventional representation of an electrical circuit. C is incorrect because the mechanical diagram is a diagram used to simplify mechanical function for machinery. Answer D is incorrect because the part diagram is a diagram used to simplify a part. Comp test 11, question number seven. UV bulbs are used to kill infectious bacteria and fungus in air systems. What does UV mean? A, ultraviolet, B, unvariable, C, ultraviolet, D, unaudible volume. C is the correct answer because ultraviolet is light with electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength shorter than that of visible light but longer than x-rays. A is incorrect because ultraviolet means beyond violent. B is incorrect because unvariable means invariable. D is incorrect because unaudible volume is low volume. 
Comp test 12, question number 5. Which of the following are true for oxygen supply systems and components? A. Pressure tested before being used. B. Cleaned to eliminate residual oxygen. C. Painted red to indicate high pressure. Or D. Scrubbed once per month for bacteria. A is the best answer here because oxygen supply must be pressurized to a certain level to assure working order. B is incorrect because oxygen supply systems and components should always be pressurized so there is no need to eliminate residual oxygen. C is incorrect because oxygen lines are not painted red typically. D is incorrect because external parts of the oxygen line or components should not come in contact with the patient. Oxygen in general can be used to kill bacteria, pathogens, viruses, and toxins in our bodies, meaning oxygen is a natural and powerful cleanser. Comp test 12, question number six. Work that is completed before a system breaks down is called A, expedient repair, B, unscheduled maintenance, C, corrective repair, D, predictive maintenance. Answer D is the best answer here because predictive maintenance allows convenient scheduling of corrective maintenance to prevent unexpected failures. Answer A is incorrect because expedient repair is when the maintenance is convenient or practical, not when a system breaks down. Answer B is incorrect because unscheduled maintenance is maintenance that is not planned for and is, is a result of a problem. Answer C is incorrect because corrective repair happens when a breakdown is discovered. Comp test 12, question number seven. Checking on just one of many of the same types of devices to check the operation is called A, random, B, selective, C, predictive, D, independent. Answer A is the best answer here because random occurs or is done without definite aim, reason, or pattern. B is not the best answer because you are not selecting any specific group of devices. C is not the best answer because you are not making predictions on devices. D is not the best answer because you would be singling out only one device. Comp test 13, question number five. A belt guard is missing on an operating piece of equipment. You should A, stop the equipment, B, replace the guard, C, call safety, D, tell the boss. Answer B is the correct answer here. Answer A is not the best answer because the equipment should never be started without the guard. Answer C is not the best answer because the equipment should not be left for others to be injured. Answer D is similar to C and is good practice but should be done after the guard is replaced to ensure others are not injured by the equipment. Comp test 13, question number six. Sound or noise created by a piece of equipment is measured in A, frequency, B, waves, C, decibels, D, cycles per second. C is the correct answer because decibel measurement is a method used to quantify audio, sound, or noise levels. Answer A is incorrect because frequency is a repeating noise event. B is incorrect because waves is a pressure transmitted energy that transfers from one point to another. D is incorrect because cycles per second is measured by how frequent alternating current changes direction. Comp test 13, question number seven. Infrared readings are used to A, measure heat, B, identify bad contactors, C, diagnose steam traps, or D, all of the above. D is the best answer here. For example, infrared testing is usually conducted on energy equipment such as breaker panels to measure heat content, identify bad contactors, and it is used to diagnose other applications such as steam traps for functionality testing. Comp test 14, Question number six. Which of the following typically costs more when a repair is made? A, personnel time. B, the number of parts. C, special tools. 
D, time to read technical literature. Answer A is the best answer here because personnel time is used in acquiring parts, special tools, and reading technical literature. B is the incorrect answer because even though many parts may be needed, the cost per part won't exceed the price of labor per hour. C is the incorrect answer because the cost of special tools will not add up as fast as personnel time. D is the incorrect answer because reading technical literature is considered personnel time. So A is the best answer here. Comp test 14, question number seven. Foot pounds is related to which of the following? A, weight of feet on the floor. B, the amount of pressure on a floor beam. C, torque. D, momentum. Answer C is the best answer here because foot-pounds is the unit of measurement of torque which is used to specify the tightness of a bolt. A is incorrect because weight is a measurement of the magnitude of force exerted on the floor. Answer B is incorrect because pressure is measured in pounds per square inch. Answer D is the incorrect answer because momentum is a product of mass and velocity. A speeding dump truck would take longer to stop due to its heavy weight, is an example. Comp test 15, question number five. To remove a pulley that is stuck on a shaft, the mechanic could A, drive it off with a hammer, B, twist it off with a chain wrench, C, cut the shaft, D, heat the pulley. Answer D is the correct answer here. Heating the pulley is the proper way of removing a pulley stuck on a shaft. Metals expand when heated, thus making it easier to remove. Answer A is incorrect because driving it off with a hammer could possibly damage the shaft and the pulley. Answer B is incorrect because twisting it off with the chain wrench could bend the shaft. And answer C is incorrect because cutting the shaft will definitely damage the shaft. Comp test 15, question number six. Rubber spring straps, rubber pads, and other things can be applied to a device that is vibrating. These things are generally known as A, vibration eliminators, B, hum devices, C, noise reducers, D, sound stoppers. Answer A is the correct answer here. The key word is vibrating. Rubber spring straps, rubber pads, can be applied to a device that is vibrating. Answer B is incorrect because hum devices deal with humming, not vibration. C is incorrect because noise reducers reduce noise. Answer D is incorrect because sound stoppers are used to sound, stop sounds, not vibrations. Comp test 15, question number seven. Torque is described as A, force, B, pressure, C, change, D, distance. A is the correct answer here. Torque is the tendency of a force to rotate an object about an axis. B is incorrect because pressure refers to a ratio of force to the area over which that force is distributed. C is incorrect because change is defined as a cause to be different. D is incorrect because distance may refer to the physical length or how far apart two objects are. Comp test 16, question number five. Sometimes mounting system components crack because too much force is applied. These cracks are caused by A, stress, B, weakness, C, poor manufacturing, or D, bad maintenance. Answer A is the correct answer here. Stress causes cracks resulting from overapplication of force on a mounting system component. B is incorrect because while weaknesses of mounting systems can sometimes be blamed for cracks resulting from overapplication of force, it is not the best answer for this question. Answer C is not the best answer because while poor manufacturing of mounting systems can sometimes be blamed for cracks resulting from overapplication of force, it is not the best answer for this question. Answer D is, is not the best answer because while overapplication of force on a mounting system is a bad maintenance 
practice, it is not the best answer for this question. Answer A is the best answer for this question. Comp test 16, question number six. Changing hard copper tubing to soft by heating it is called A, work softening, B, material softening, C, molecular degradation, D, annealing. D is the correct answer here because heating hard copper to cherry red and allowing it to cool increases copper grain size and softens the material. This process is known as annealing. A and B answers are both incorrect because each are a part of the process of annealing. C is incorrect because molecular degradation is the process of bending, rolling, or hammering copper, reducing its grain size, allowing the smaller grains to lock together in a tougher, work-hardened state. Bending copper alters its internal structure, and the more the metal is worked, with the more brittle it becomes, until it reaches a breaking point and it fractures. Comp test 16, question number seven. Fluids used to move mechanical parts are called A, distilled, B, hydraulic, C, caustic, D, oils. Answer B is the best answer here because hydraulics is the use of pressurized liquid or fluid to generate, control, or transmit power. Answer A is not the best answer because distillation is a process of removing impurities from water. Answer C is not the best answer here because caustic is the capability of a substance to burn, corrode, or destroy living tissues. Answer D is not the best answer here because oils are viscous liquid, but not the answer to this question. Comp test 17, question number five. An electric motor is diagnosed as having play in the shaft. What is the likely problem? A, bearings are bad. B, armature is loose. C, pulley is not tight. D, brushes are worn. Answer A is the correct answer here. Bearings are what holds the shaft in place. Answer B is incorrect because the armature is connected to the shaft which is being held by the bearing. A bad bearing could result in a loose armature. Answer C is not the best answer here because there is no pulley in an electric motor. And answer D is not the correct answer because brushes do not hold the shaft. Worn out brushes do not affect the shaft in any way. Comp test 17, question number six. The tool used to measure the distance a cylinder moves is the A, cylinder travel device, B, hydraulic gauge, C, pressure gauge, or D, tape measure. Answer D is the best answer here because a tape measure is used to get proper distance for the cylinder. Answer A is not the best answer here, as well as B is the incorrect answer because the hydraulic gauge is used to measure pressure fluids in the system. Answer C is incorrect because the pressure gauge is used to measure pressures such as steam. Comp test 17, question number seven. A bolt has broken flush with the surface and it needs to come out. The first step would be to A, use a center punch, B, drill a hole in the bolt, C, measure the bolt, D, use an extractor. A is the best answer here because a center punch is used to mark a hole before drilling happens. B is incorrect because if you do not use a center punch first, the drill bit may start to walk and therefore may not be at the center of the bolt anymore. Answer D is incorrect because measuring the bolt will not remove it. Answer D is similar to B in that it is incorrect because using an extractor needs a pilot hole drilled first. Comp test 18, question number five. If the bolt hole is not aligned with the thread, what tool is used to align the hole? A, a hammer, B, a pin punch, C, a drift punch, 
or D, a pry bar. Answer C is the correct answer because a drift punch will align two parts of aligning bolt holes. A is incorrect because a hammer may not fit into the thread holes. Answer B is incorrect because a pin punch is used to remove threaded bolts. Answer D is incorrect because a pry bar is used to pry pieces apart and not to align them. Comp test 18, question number 6. An old belt can be removed from a pulley by A, cutting the belt, B, prying the belt off the pulley, C, loosening the motor mount bolts, or D, all of the above. Answer D is the best answer here, because answers A, B, and C are all correct. Comp test number 18, question number 7. A gear reducer is making a whining noise. Which of the following is the most likely cause? A, reducer mount is loose. B, bearings are bad. C, drive coupling is loose. Or D, gear is missing a tooth. Answer B is the best answer here, because the loss of lubrication over time will create friction. This will cause a whining noise and eventual seizure of the bearing. Answer A is incorrect because any mount being loose is more likely going to create a rattle type noise. Answer C is incorrect because loose linkages in a drive coupling will create a slapping noise, not a whining noise. Answer D is not the best answer because a missing tooth on a gear can sometimes go undetected for quite a while and will not create a whining noise. Multiple teeth loss will eventually lead to drive failure. It will not be preceded by much, if any, noise at all. This concludes the general maintenance portion of our study guide.